It being 6.30 p.m. on Monday, September 11th, I give I call this regular meeting of the Gardner School Committee to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. And Mrs. Collier. Present. Mrs. Hers. Present. Mr. Lafrenier. Present. Mrs. Layton. Present. Mrs. Colavin. Present. Mr. Schwartz. Present. Mary Nicholson. Present. And Dr. Pellegrino. Present. Okay, all present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence after that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, in honor of today being the anniversary of the 9 11 attacks, we'll pause for a brief moment of silence. Thank you. First item on the agenda is some time for the general public. Is there anyone here from the general public who wishes to be heard? Seeing none, moving on to recognitions by the superintendent, Dr. Pellegrino. Excellent. So I wanted to bring something up about um, last year, in the middle of the year, um, uh, we, uh, the biology teacher, um, stopped being with us in halfway through the year. And in true Gardner form, um, we had some folks who stepped up and took over. And although it, it's still embargoed, we were looking at some preliminary scores. And it looks like the folks who stepped up, some of them aren't teachers. Some of them just stepped in. Um, some of them are tutors. Um, some were nurses. Everybody pitched in to make sure that the kids got through. And actually, we still, it looks like we actually beat last year's scores um, through the hard work of a bunch of dedicated individuals who looked at the curriculum, said what are the standards we need to teach, how do we do this, and really thought, we were really thoughtful about how they deliver instruction to the kids. And they got the kids through. This is a, you know, at a time when you know, it's unprecedented how difficult it is to hire teachers um, who are certified and qualified. So to have these folks step in for our kids was just really special. And I just wanted to um, invite them up here. And some of them, by the way, texted me. Um, Tina and um, uh, Tina Russack and uh, Becky McCaffrey, who are two of our nurses who helped out with this, um, were going to come tonight. But because of flash flooding, they said we're going to stay home and play it safe. Um, but I would like to call up Melissa Bennett, Carlos Silva, Arvin Tenney, Becky McCaffrey, Tina Russack are not here, and Sherry Jelanski. So without these folks, it really wouldn't have been possible to pull something off for our kids. So I just wanted to recognize them tonight. And by the way, you don't have to stay for the entire meeting. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I just wanted to recognize them because this is the type of people that we have working in Gardner. And I think they, they deserve that uh, round of applause. So thank you. Thanks. No, I didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda listed as item D. This was included in the packet for information. Are there any questions, comments, or a motion on the consent agenda? Thanks, please. Thanks. <laughs> motion made by Attorney Palavin. Is there a second on the floor? Sure. Motion made by Attorney Palavin, seconded by Mr. Schwartz, to accept the consent agenda as presented. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Item E, reports of the subcommittees, beginning with the facility subcommittee, Mr. Schwartz. This is a subcommittee report from June 9th, 2023. Um, just want to make note of the, the new concession stand and the restaurant facility that was being used at the graduation. And several people commented on how nice the facility was. Um, the Watkins Field, the uh, district maintenance department, now has the necessary equipment to maintain and care for the turf field. And I think that's very important since that field's about four years old now, or maybe even older. Uh, 
moving the district administration will let's happen. Uh, they're on the second floor of the whole Elm Street School. We had a meeting there uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, it, it just sort of blows my mind that the, they're sitting in old classrooms and it's all about them and nothing else. <laughs> so they can play games, bounce balls off the wall, and, and have a, a good fun time. And it sort of echoes a little bit. Need to fill up the rooms a little bit. Um, as of uh, J July 10th, I believe, we declared the uh, Helen May Sauter School and the baseball and the football field behind it as surplus as well as the front uh, the big chair we declared that all surplus turn it over to you mr mayor yes sir so you now own it and it's just amazing that i think back that the schools that we have or the buildings of schools that we have spread about the city all over the city when it was fashionable to have neighborhood schools that our whole school district is really in one close knit place on earth up, up off of Pearl Street, Catherine Street. I think that's amazing. I think that's the step of progress, really. That's what I believe. And that's all I have to report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Any questions, comments, or concerns on the facilities subcommittee report? Seeing none, moving on to the finance subcommittee. Mr. Lafreniere. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I also have a meeting minutes from June 8th. Um, very quick meeting. Uh, we basically went over the expense report. Uh, um, Ms. Tark noted that the process uh, to close unused POs and transfer funds within the budget to cover any negative balances has started. Um, current status for all the uh, revolving funds. All funds are healthy and should end the year with positive balances. And uh, and then same thing, we, we talked about the uh, concession stand being uh, completed with just a few punch items listed. And that was the end of that meeting. And then our most recent meeting held uh, September 7th. And we went over the expense report. Uh, Ms. Blavin raised questions regarding the salary lines uh, being in negative and transfers being made. Uh, it was explained that from when we created the budget in February to now, many people have come and gone. Salaries are different and a few positions have changed. It's just the start of the year, but we don't foresee any budget issues. Uh, then we had donation. We accepted the uh, Gardner High School class of 1970, donated two benches uh, for the Gardner Elementary School. Uh, proved that and reported on the uh, opening of the school. Um, everything seemed to go very well, minor bumps in the roads. By all accounts, busing is going well. Uh, food service management is doing well. Um, and the traffic patterns, uh, all the schools seem to be working. And those statements all uh, were followed by a, all knocking on wood. <laughs> <laughs> um, it did seem to go really well. And I do have to say, this is um, one of the first years in a long time I didn't get phone calls right away or emails right away after the opening of school. Mostly busing issues, which always seem to work their way out, but this year it seemed to go better than ever. So that was it. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing that, moving on to the policy subcommittee, Mrs. Hurst. Uh, we have a policy meeting um, on June 22nd. Um, and it's a 19 of uh, seven policies for first three. Uh, um, KCD, public gifts to the schools, DIE audits, EB safety program, EB, AB pest management, EBB first aid, EBC emergency plans, and ECA buildings and ground security. And then um, 
We have three that are up um, for uh, removal. Um, they were redundant or unnecessary. Um, so that would be DE, private funding, EA, support service goals and objectives, EBCP, school closing and cancellations. Um, so I have to make a motion for each one, or can we do? Uh, we'll take a note that there's no student advisory board member, so we don't have an item F. Uh, that we don't have to do anything for item 3535, which is the first read of those policies, as those included for information. So then we need a motion as a whole for 3536 for removal of those policies. Is that what you just made as a motion? Mrs. That's kind of what I would like to do. Thank you. <laughs> is there a second? <laughs> motion made by Mrs. Hurst, second by Mr. Schwartz, to remove uh, policies D, E, E, A, and E, B, C, E as presented in your packet. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item number 3537, the school calendar update for the update for the 2023-2024 school year. Dr. Pellegrino. So um, we went over the uh, at the beginning of the year as we do each year. We look at the calendar and we make sure there are no conflicts with any of the state testing. And one of the things was we noticed there were several conflicts, unfortunately, with MCAS testing, which is unusual for the dates that we're usually around, but we had to move some dates from Wednesdays to Thursdays or from Wednesdays to Tuesdays. So minor shifts in schedule, just making it so uh, the same number of half days, um, but it just makes it so we can, we can have MCAS. Uh, this is included on page 43 of the packet of information you have before you with any questions, comments, or a motion on the floor. Uh, motion to accept as presented. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Ms. Lafrenia, second by Ms. Ward Layton to accept the updates of the calendar as presented. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item number 3538, donation of two benches to Gardner Elementary School. Mr. Lafrenia, you want to? Yeah, um, so these uh, donations were uh, two benches that are now at the uh, Gardner Elementary School. Um, they were donated by the class of 1970. They're really nice. Um, and I make a motion that we accept the donation. Second the motion. Motion made by Mr. Lafrenia, seconded by Mr. Schwartz to accept the donation of the two benches from the class of 1970. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll put the matter to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item number 3539, donation of 100 backpacks with school supplies. Mr. Lafrenia. Dr. Pellegrino, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, Dr. Pellegrino. <laughs> <laughs> I just assume donations finance. Yeah, um, so we had um, 100 backpacks um, that, were, um, that were given to us for all the, um, all the uh, kids who are coming into our district. And um, that was from the um, Gardner um, Community, Ac Community Action Committee. Yes. Um, and I thought it was really wonderful that they gave us on. Did I say that right? I think no? Semen, semen paper. Semen paper. Semen paper. My apologies. I was freak. I was frantically looking through here. Um, so yeah. So semen, semen paper actually donated 100 backpacks, and they're for our, they're for our kiddos um, who who need these backpacks. And considering that we have, uh, we have what? How many families now? Um, 27 um, new families in the district that are refugee families. So um, that's been very helpful for them, um, as well as um, some other folks who are, um, you know, on right now financial hard times. So extremely well um, received um, by the districts. To you know, to me, this is really important. We will note that the CAC did donate 250 backpacks directly to the students and not through the school, so we don't have to accept that donation here as a school committee. This is when it was donated to the school department for us to distribute to the students. Move to accept the donation. Second. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion by Ms. Lafrenier, seconded by Mrs. Cormier to accept the donation of 100 backpacks from Seaman Paper Company. Any discussion on the motion? Just uh, would like to thank them. Much appreciated, much needed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. We have some really good community partners and so many people are just stepping up to, yeah. to help out with things. It's just it's nice amazing. Yeah. 
Any other discussion on the motion? No. Mrs. Cormier. Yep. They, they both said it at the same time, yes. so I gave it to Rachel. <laughs> uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Item number 3540, the Massachusetts Association of School Committees Delegate. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion made by Attorney Palavin, second by Mrs. Cormier, <laughs> to nominate Mr. Schwartz to serve as the district's delegate to the Massachusetts Association of School Committees. Are there any other nominations on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of Mr. Schwartz say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Congratulations, Mr. Schwartz. Thank you. <laughs> Item number 3541, Superintendent Goals, Dr. Pellegrino. So um, you all have a copy of, the, of the, my goals in your packets. Essentially, just like our, just like our plans, we've been going in one direction and um, not the band, but we're going in the same direction. We're all pulling together. And when you, when you look at my goals, basically for district improvement, it's reducing equity, equity gaps in, in academics for multilingual students and students with special needs and reducing the equity gap in discipline and dropout rates. Um, Actually, um, Kathy will be talking about that a little bit later on um, in terms of how we've been moving in that direction. Um, and for student learning, fide um, fidelity to tier one academic supports. And what fidelity means is what we're actually doing, what we're supposed to be doing in terms of supporting students in the classroom. Um, I'm very focused on the tier one because if tier one that reaches all students, if we're not doing that well, then we're never going to be able to move on um, to, to help students who really need extra help. But you first have to have solid instruction and we need to respond to um, data within the classroom. So those are our um, academic tier one supports. And very focused still on um, uh, students reading at grade level from K, from K to, right from K to four. Um, we've made some um, definite improvements each year. They've been um, doing wonderfully. And frankly, they've been focused on the tier one supports at that level. Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased with our progress, but we're still not where we need to be. Um, and finally, my professional practice goal will be to, to continue to participate in the Lynch Leadership Academy. Um, I participate with, with that actually with um, my leadership, district leadership team. Um, and we talk about our goals and how we're moving, uh, the leadership moves that we need to do to keep moving the district forward. Any questions, comments, concerns on this in your packet on page 45? Seeing none, moving on to item number 3542, District Improvement Plan, Dr. Gogan. Thank you. I used to make fun of people for wearing their glasses on their nose, but now I know why they do that. <laughs> you can't see in either direction without them there. <clears throat> um, so I asked uh, Mark just to display the District Improvement Plan document up here, and I'll talk to some of the points here. It's a lot of words up there, and, and I'm not going to read all of that to you. But our district improvement plan is a three-year plan. Started This one started in 2021, and it will go until the end of this school year, 24. Um, and it starts with our mission. And then we, we determined what our core values were. And you, you've seen that in a lot of different places. The care, community, appreciation, responsibility, and excellence. And then we tried to define that. What does that mean? And from there, we determined our vision for what we want every child in every classroom every day to feel. And you can see um, the three major points here that they feel welcome, safe, and included in our learning community. That we have adults that are consistently working with students to foster positive and supportive relationships. And also that we're engaged, um, that stu all students are relevant engaged in relevant, rigorous instruction that's informed by data. And all of that brought us to a theory of action that says, okay, that sounds great, but what do we need to do to make to see that reality? And so we said, we have a culture of dignity and inclusion for all students, and that we hold high expectations for all students, and we collect and respond to data around uh, how our students are doing, both socially, emotionally, and academically. And we also <laughs> provide teachers with the time and the training to do this well. And we work together in collaboration with 
our colleagues, our community, and our families, um, then all students will be able to achieve the success and the readiness for life, for college, and be socially, emotionally um, contributing members of their community. So those are our theories, those are our mission, and so we came up with strategic objectives around those theories of action. And each of those things where it said, and we do this, we came up with four different categories of objectives. One is that high expectations for all students, both academically and socially, emotionally. We want them to perform and we're going to support them, but we expect it at a high level. Um, we providing teachers with that adequate time, training, and leadership and the resources they need to be successful with their students, giving people the ability and the support and the training to collect and analyze and use data to make instructional decisions um, and to support and provide interventions for our students, also socially, emotionally. And then also that we collaborate with our community and families um, to make all of this work. So we have several action steps. I won't read all of those action steps to you, um, but under each category, and we color coded them so we keep track of you know, where we are, but they're all connected. And so if you go down to the next page, Mark, um, we had some outcomes that we wanted to see by the end of the three years. And so we'll just talk briefly about these outcomes and show you where we are right now. And, um, and then we'll talk about some of the benchmarks that we wanted to meet by each school year and show you where we stand with those as well. So starting with number one, at all three tiers of academic and SEL support, we want them to be developed and implemented. So we're not fully developed and implemented. However, if you look at letter A, it said tier one implementation will meet at least 90% fidelity. Currently, we're at about 68% as opposed to last year when we were about 65. And that was at the end of last year. So, we've, you know, so we're, we're aiming for that 90%. Um, as a bullet underneath that is 100% of co-teaching classrooms will implement varied co-teaching models. So we had a consultant working with us and due to um, circumstances beyond her control last year, she needed to leave in about November. However, over the summer uh, of 22, she worked with all of our administrators to come up with an action plan. And even though she wasn't here, they carried through with that action plan. Um, so we were a little bit ahead of schedule with that goal that you'll see down below. And um, although I'm not sure if we'll meet the 100% of the varied co-teaching models, there is co-teaching happening in all classrooms across the district. So we're really excited about that. And um, Joyce has her finger on that and we're continuing that work. <clears throat> um, the second one, tier two implementation will be at least 70% fidelity. Right now, uh, we're at about a, a little less than 50% fidelity. Um, and when we talk about this, we're talking mostly SEL. Remember, academics started a little bit later. So our academic, we're still focused mostly on tier one. This year we'll be implementing tier two in it, um, but it won't be the major focus. Tier one will still be the focus. And that, will, that we are hoping for 100%. Um, letter C was 90% of students in grades K through four will meet early literacy assessment benchmarks. I'm really excited to say that we continue to grow in this area. And um, at the end of June, June 2023, 81% of our kindergarten students were at least meeting the strategic level, which means they need very little support and almost no support at all. So 81% is a huge number. Um, grade one, 82%. Grade two, 72%. And grade three, 61%. And grade four, 67%. So we're really thrilled. Um, in addition to the work that we've been doing around focusing on early literacy strategies, training our teachers in the science of reading, which is the newest research-based um, information about how students learn how to read, we've also made sure that all of our reading assessment tools, our reading instruction tools, are aligned across all grade levels. And that's been helping. And finally, I yeah. interrupt for a quick second. So she glossed over this, but you know, um, Dr. Gogan, um, along with Andy Blackbird, the coach, and the, those teachers and the leadership um, teacher leaders at the elementary school, 
those are the highest scores they've had from, from, from grade kindergarten one and two. For and many years. Since, I don't even since know. We've ever, yeah. we, we couldn't go back far enough to see scores go higher. So as far as we know, those are the highest scores we've had in well over a decade. Um, so I just want to commend her and um, her team and all those teachers for the hard work um, in doing that. that we're definitely um, going in the right direction. Uh, yeah, and uh, it was finally um, the other piece of this was legislation uh, enacted and it, and it comes into effect this year that we're required to have dyslexia screening tools and universal tools for all students. And so in preparation for that, we created a literacy committee at the elementary school last year. We have a phenomenal team, including myself, Joyce, um, and all anybody who's a specialist of any kind. Um, we do have one reading specialist, the reading coach, school psychologist, anybody who's, in, um, who's an expert in assessment or in reading came together to create an early literacy plan of action in, in addition to what we've already been doing to look at our assessments and make sure we have what we need um, to diagnose and really provide targeted interventions and to address <coughs> and find students that may potentially have dyslexia to meet them where they're at right away and, and um, address those needs immediately. So we're really excited about that. They have a beautiful plan that was developed by the end of last year. Mandy and Megan Wilson, our um, MTSS administrator for Gardner Elementary School, worked on a presentation that was phenomenal for the first week of school and rolled that plan out with several um, resources and templates and all kinds of things and they'll continue to support the teachers in that. So we expect even, even more growth for this year. Really excited about that. Um, special education referrals will be reduced by 10%. Um, we had a bump this current school year up by um, a few students that were referred and because the numbers are not that big anymore um, it seems like a large percentage up we went up 16 percent but since 15 the 2015 2016 school year we had 66 referrals to special education and um, in 22 23 we had 36 so it's almost cut in half so we are we are continuing to watch that and um, year to year even though it went up a little bit this year we're We'll keep an eye on that to make sure it continues a downward trend. Yeah, two quick things, you know, um, a big part of that is move-ins. Um, not, not as much um, of our um, in-district referrals. But the second piece is the reason we have this on our goals is because if we're doing a great job with Tier 1, kids don't need specialized services. They're getting the services right from just being in class. So the better job we do with that, the, the more reduction in referrals we have. That's why that's a major goal. Um, the second category, dropout rates for students with disabilities will be no higher than the state expectation. We're very, very close to that. Um, I think we're like 0.1% away from the state. So we're really close to hitting that goal. Chronic absenteeism, um, in March of 2021, we had a 17% gap with the state. And in March of 23, we had a 14% gap with the state. So we are making some gains in that area, but still some work to do. Uh, dropout rate for each subgroup will be no higher than the aggregate. All students were 2.2%. Um, this is in 2022. The 2023 numbers haven't come out yet from the state. Um, and students with disabilities was 2.4%. So the difference is about 0.2%. So we're watching that, but we're getting close. And our ELL population um, was higher. Um, than the state by by three percent. However, it dropped by two percent from where it was two years ago. So we're we're heading in the right direction. Um, let's see. District will meet state expectations and compliance for SSDR. That's um, student discipline, and in particular, um, suspensions, both <coughs> in school and out of school suspensions. We exceeded that goal by a mile. Um, our numbers compared to the state, if you're looking at a bar graph, our bar is this big and the state's this big. So we're doing really well in the area of, of suspensions. <clears throat> uh, building level office referrals, no higher than 50% of the national level for comparative schools. Um, 
Gardner High School by far was closest to that goal last year. Um, middle school and Elm Street have some work to do. They're still higher. They're still in about the 75th to 80th percent by the national average. So we'll still be working on that. Um, all subgroups will meet or exceed state MCAS targets in ELA and math. I will say that last year was a baseline year for us for MCAS. Uh, so there was no accountability status. But because Elm, the Elm Street School did so well on on their MCAS in 2022, we they took our status away as needing assistance. So we're now a district not in need of assistance. Um, we obviously the 23 information is embargoed, so we can't really talk about that. But as of 2022, we are not in need of assistance, so we're still moving along. And um, that means that the state doesn't come in to um, provide us with additional oversight. Um, We've been really fortunate that we, in some ways, that we were in need of assistance for many years because we got a lot of free PD and we took advantage of everything that came our way, and we and we benefited from that. But we're really looking forward to using that information without the oversight of the state moving forward. Um, and then we have the last one in this category was diversity of students in our early college vocational program will rep represent the diversity of our high school enrollment. We're very close to that. It's it's. Um, right now, our students with disabilities is the largest gap in that group, so we're working on that. But our diversity looks very similar to the diversity of our schools. Um, the last category, 75% of evidence-based family engagement practices listed in, in um, the MTSS blueprint. They have a blueprint for family engagement, and we're, we're just starting to really delve into that document and start to create systems and structures that are more rigorous in this area. Um, but it did say that they, we wanted 90% of parents to agree in the parent voice and 90% of students agreeing in the student voice surveys that school and family partnerships are satisfactory. When we looked at that data, uh, we're about 80% right now. So not far off the mark. And those, those are all of our outcomes that we're hoping to reach by the end of next year. We will be updating this district improvement plan this fall and into the winter, and we plan to have an updated plan for you to review in the spring so that it's ready to go in the fall. And then the school improvement plans will follow that. Um, the implementation timeline. Um, last year in September, I went over this in all, most Everything was filled in for to be completed by June 22nd. All of those things were complete and still ongoing, even though they're not really ever complete, but we completed what we wanted to do and, and we're continuing to go. On the page five of the document, the new things, we had a few things for the end of this last school year that we wanted to do. The inclusion co-teaching observation checklist that was developed, so that is complete and still being used. Um, Karen Martin helped us to do that before she left. Um, learning walk observation data. We were gonna use to measure whether or not the updated literacy program curriculum instruction and our assessment resources provide, and to provide training for our teachers. We use learning walk data to see how that was being implemented. Um, we did purchase all of the materials we said we were going to purchase. We had new literacy materials, new literacy assessment tools, and new math materials. All of that's now purchased, and we'll be continuing to watch the implementation of that. 80% um, of lessons will meet at least the application. This is a little bit old terminology. We're going to change that more to um, the terminology that we use now. But basically, that we're using higher order thinking um, expecting high order thinking strategies from our students and so we'll be watching that this year but um, we have some progress in that area what I will say about this this topic is that because we we changed the way we were looking at things we became more stringent in what we were looking at our numbers dropped because we were we were scoring them harder so now we're looking to see that they improve from that baseline that we created last year. We have our first learning walk coming up um, the third week of October. So we'll be able to give you more information about that. School family partnerships, 
and a family survey. We definitely did the family survey. We did some um, family engagement opportunity um, nights and we created a family engagement committee, so that's ongoing. And MTSS tier two academic systems practices supports. Tier two is definitely in process, but we're really more focused on tier one, so that will be continuing. And then going down into 20, June 24, there is one thing that we started to complete, and I had told you before that that was those action plans for the co-teaching. We were a little bit ahead in that, so that's, that's already done, and we'll continue to monitor that. So that's where we stand right now, and it looks like we're on track to be in good shape for the end of June, and we'll have our updated um, improvement plan for you to see in the spring as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Gogan. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns from the members of the school committee? Ms. Ward Layton. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge um, Kathy and Mark for explaining the, the special education referral reduction because as soon as, as when I saw that, I was like, wait, but, and then you explained that because of tier one, if you meet all of the students' needs and if you just have great best practices as a foundation, it's almost like it, it creates less work for you in the long run. So just thank you for kind of clarifying that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just really, it's good that it's like a proactive approach rather than just kind of diagnosing a symptom and trying to fix it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments, concerns? Um, for the literacy program, mm -hmm. it, was, it, was by, it was purchasing the update, I think, right, to the one Correct. that we had. Okay. But it was, it was pretty much a brand new curriculum. There were some things that we could continue to use, but it changed so much that it was really um, like a whole new curriculum purchase. And that was because the DESE deemed that one to, the one that they said was recommended was no longer deemed appropriate. <laughs> Within two years, so. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to us that we were able to do that. We would not have. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, yes, Mr. Frenny, did you have something? No, no you didn't. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moving on to item number 3543, the College and Career Readiness Coordinator update. This was included in your packet for information. Are there any other questions, comments, concerns? Actually, um, oh, um, if you don't mind, um, uh, Melissa Payne, our College and Career sorry, Readiness sorry. Coordinator, wanted <laughs> to uh, go over a couple things. All right, thanks. So, Amanda, actually, Jeff, I'll pick back off Dr. Hogan. So, um, we are closing the gap on our special ed uh, numbers and, as well as the rest of our equity numbers, so we're really excited about the projected data for this year, um, we won't run full demographics until after October 1 because we're still putting in you know, all of our free reduced lunch and we're still have enrollment packets coming in. Um, but our projected numbers, we've worked really hard to engage our students in the early college program who truly are not represented at the higher education level. That's a huge part of our designation criteria is to make sure those students have access to this program. Um, there are certain areas that we've really struggled in. At the end of last year, based off of enrollment, we were at 0% of our students with um, disabilities in the program, 0% with ELL. We had almost 7% were multi-race non-Hispanic, 34% low income, 13% uh, um, Hispanic, 75% white, and 4% black African American. Uh, we have seen significant increases across the board with the exception of EL. We still have the projected numbers. I, I do think we'll see a little bit of a change in that, but right now it's still at zero for this year. Um, but we do have 5% in, with students with disabilities, so it's a pretty big jump. And I do wanna note there is some underrepresentation there because we do have a lot of students who go into the program and they will come off of their IEPs because they are declining their you know they're declining their services. So because we don't offer a co-top model in a college environment, um, most of our students by the time they get to junior or senior year are maybe not in access supports anymore. They just have some co-top support. They will then opt out in order to participate in the program. So we do have some underrepresentation by nature of, of this. So, um, but it's good to see that we're still reaching students who need the support and getting them in the program. Um, low income, which was an area that we have identified that we were not doing phenomenal at, is up to over 50%, about 51% right now um, for students in the program who are low income, 11% multi-race non-Hispanic, 20%, which is compared to 22% is our overall enrollment for GHS right now, so um, almost equivalent to school enrollment for that. 6% for black African American, over our school enrollment, which is at four. Um, and we are at 61% white, and our overall school enrollment is at 63. So we're actually really starting to see that we are representing our population in, the, um, in this program, which is very exciting. Um, for our overall enrollment numbers, um, we have seen growth for all three programs this year. So our early college program, which is the 
one that is under Gardner High School is up to 64 students. That went up from 43 students last year. So this was a huge growth. And again, a lot of that was the work we did with recruiting and attracting appropriate students who are sitting in our you know, college prep and honors classes and trying to move away from our, um, you know, our AP, our advanced placement students who, who were exiting the program um, previously. So um, huge improvement in that. We have 15 of them are returning, 49 new students to that program, and 38 juniors and 26 seniors. So, um, we like to kind of see that younger class with a higher enrollment because then we get the full two years out of it, which is the most credit attainment they can get. So um, our Pathways program, which is the associate's degree program, is up to 29 students. That went up from 13 to 13 returning and 16 new. And our Gateway to College, which is our at-risk dropout prevention program run through Gardner Academy, is at 87 students right now. There's 37 returning and 50 new students enrolled, which is a huge um, increase there as well. So that's excellent. Um, the other, some of the other, you know, dual enrollment classes that we have, I just want to note, is um, we have three sections running that are college credited, two through Fitchburg, sorry, two through Mount Wachusett Community College and one through Fitchburg State, and these are to reach additional students outside of our program. So any student does not have to apply into this program, is open to take any of these classes. Uh, so we have English 101 running right now with an additional 21 students in there a Principles of Marketing class through Fitchburg State, running with 16 students, and then an auto tech class at the very, very nice, if nobody's seen it, brand new auto tech facility um, right across from Mackey's. Um, that's at 15 students. That actually has a wait list of three students right now as well. So um, we have a total of 230 th 30 students in districts that are receiving at least three college credits this semester. And then we have an additional 150 AP exams that is set to be ordered. Uh, and that number is still fluctuating. We have until October 15th. Um, to finalize enrollment there. So um, currently, with that's approximately 90 students. Um, some, obviously some of those students take multiple, so um, about 330 students right now and some sort of college credit bearing costs um, for the first semester. So just a quick note. So did you hear how fast she talks? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa Payne has one speed, and that's fast. <laughs> um, but um, you know, Melissa's position. You know, uh, luckily, you know, the state is really supporting early college, and that's what's funded um, almost all of Melissa's position, frankly. But it's really helped us hone in on. Um, I say us, Melissa, hone in on making sure we're reaching out to kids. You know, um, uh, she worked with um, Mark Hawk. And actually, our new Fresh Picks um, solved our problem for lunches to get up to the. So, for months, we were working, maybe a year, almost a year, actually, probably, we were working with Whitsons to try to get lunches up to the kid at the, to the kids at the, um, the college. Couldn't do it within two weeks, and I think just one meeting, really, with, with Fresh Ten Picks. Minute, yeah. we, we now have lunches um, going up, um, up, up to the college for um, kids who are on free, um, free lunch. Um, right now, everybody's free, technically, so it's, it's really helpful for our kiddos, um, you know, who are participating in that program. So um, I'm just thrilled with the expansion of all the programs and looking at it not just from, okay, these are kids who are going on to four-year schools, the automotive program, the, um, and actually Melissa is also spearheading the, um, the After Dark program with Mom, um, Monty Tech. These are all different ways that we're trying to reach kids. Um, in alternative ways rather than just comp you know, a comprehensive high school and a traditional um, uh, high school. So we're trying to be as creative as possible and Melissa is a go-getter as you've heard. Mm -hmm. I do speak fast. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> we'll, call it, we'll call it passionate. It's not fast, it's passionate. <laughs> I do, my brain goes on speed. Um, the last program that both of us forgot to mention, um, we do have our Innovation Pathway Healthcare, Business and Manufacturing and funding um, just got confirmed for that, which means we do get to run our CNA program out of the high school this year, and that is separate from the, you know, the, the college credit nursing ones. These are for our students who want to go right into the workforce. Um, and last year we were able to get four of our students um, CNA certified before graduation so they could sit for their exams and um, go right into the workforce. So we do have that program as well. Yeah. And those, that, those programs are with, um, they were identified from, with working in collaboration with um, uh, um, the skill, the what am I thinking of? The Chamber yeah. of Commerce. Oh, um, yes, the, yeah. Right. Yep, Chamber um, of Commerce, and then the adult, it's the adult workforce um, team over at Mount Wachusett Community College. They've been a um, phenomenal partner, really helping us reach some of our non, um, you know, our non-traditional college-bound students, so we're able to enroll them in workforce development as 18-year-old seniors, um, so they don't have to do it after graduation. So, um, mm. yeah, they've been an excellent addition to our partnership as well. You sound very busy. 
I have a question on the, yes. uh, I believe you said the new automotive center across the Ma Mackey's. Yes. Are you talking about the Mackey's in Pittsburgh? No, in Gardner. Um, Mackey Building Center. Oh, really? Yeah, I, don't, I actually don't know what the building was previously. This is the third year that Mount has been in it. Last year yeah. was their first year that they were it was a facility, former yeah. body shop that the Mount Foundation purchased and moved their body shop there and then fully renovated. It had the grand opening, I think, in April so of this the year. the old industrial center on the Yes. yes. Behind, actually yeah. Actually behind. Linus and Lane Avenue. Yeah. Yeah, the okay. first building on the left on Linus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're starting, oh, they'll yes. be starting yeah. their classes tomorrow. So I will, they won't be on, they won't be in their campus until Thursday. So Thursday I will get some, some pictures of them. Yeah. Uh, the West Company, they that. went out of business. Yeah. I know where it is. Yeah, right off of Betty Spring Road. And they just got an approved EV grant, so they will also be one of the first, you know, auto tech facilities, schools, schools, not facilities in our area to do EV as well. So our students will have access to, um, they are renovating the whole back half of their facility to be an EV auto facility. So that would be for our students. The mm -hmm. after dark part, portion of that. Yep. Um, I know you've explained it before. What what else? What's involved in that? Like, what are they uh, offered through that? So um, it's actually for twenty students in total. In total, right? It'll be twenty students for Gardner. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, it's electrical and carpentry. The theoretical breakdown will be ten and ten. Um, but this is just our planning year of the grant, so we actually, you know, we're not one hundred percent sure what it'll look like. Um, but it should be ten students will have access to. You know, electrical, ten students have X. The carpentry, and five juniors, five seniors, and each is, is theoretically what like. Basically, they'll have one week where they go to Mount Watt, um, Mount Wachusett, uh, no, excuse Monty me, Monty Tech, Tech. Yep. and then um, while the other half that yep. are in the other um, the other grade will stay with us and they'll attend classes um, with us, yep. and then the next week they swap, and so they'll get kind of a, a half a year yep. of these vocational um, pieces. So they won't get the full experience. So I've been very clear with Monty Tech that this is not something that, it's something that we encourage obviously for our kids who have decided this is the path they want to go on, but also this is for many kids who wanted to go to Monty Tech and weren't able to get in. So it opens up that door, but I've been very clear with them and the state's been very clear that this does not um, um, supplant their obligation to have a diverse um, group of students who go to Monty Tech Full time, um, which has been one of the things, as you all know, um, that the state has, has brought up, um, and the numbers still weren't good this past year. So they're moving closer and closer to having state intervention as to what will need, what will happen with enrollments. I'd like to see more trades available to our students because we really don't have them in our schools. Anymore. Absolutely, yeah. And so right now we have the automotive. You know, we're trying to get the electrical and, and well, we will we will get the electrical and carpentry. Yeah. With manufacturing, we have... Um, we have the manufacturing through innovation pathways, yep. Okay. Um, yep. You know, supposedly they might add plumbing into the after dark, but that's going to be the, you know, the next round out, so we'll see if that's included. Um, the CNA program will CNA. be for some certified nursing assistants. Yep. So we're trying to do as much as we can to bring to our students what, they're, um, what some of them are asking for. Thank you. It's important to note for the after dark as well. Um, they they are our choice of students. So Monty Tech uh, traditionally reviews the applications and decides. Um, Gardner is responsible for sending the twenty students. We select them, and it does have to be through you know through, through a lottery. If there is more applicants, but they cannot deny any students. So there is no criteria from the Monty Tech side for this program, which is important. Yeah. Thank you. Just because it was thrown out there for the record, uh, I was one of the twenty five mayors who signed onto the letter to Secretary Tutwiler about looking at diversity with our enrollment at the tech schools across Massachusetts and admissions policies across not just Monty Tech but mm -hmm. Commonwealth wide so that is mm -hmm. ongoing. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item number 3544 curriculum coordinator update. This was included in your packet for information this time. Um, <laughs> if there's any discussion on the update as presented in your packet. Glad to see an increase in funds. Thank you Dr. Gogan. Yes. <laughs> 
Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Item number question. three. Oh, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, Robbie, Dr. Gogan can answer it is sheltered English immersion training for classroom teachers. Could you clarify that a little bit? So those are the general education classroom teachers. They got to take an endorsement course that uh, showed them strategies to use for students who are multilingual learners and non, uh, even to the level that a student could come into the classroom and not speak any English. So they, all of our teachers who work with students um, who are multilingual learners have to have that endorsement within one year of having multilingual learners in their classroom. In addition to that, because that's a six week class or a semester long class, in addition to that, Lori will be providing training um, in the strategies that we want to see in every classroom every day when we're doing walkthroughs so that our students are getting the full, full access to the curriculum. They also have specific EL instruction pulled out of the classroom, but when they're in the classroom, they need to have, they call it sheltered instruction. Mm -hmm. so, Thank you. They have those things like word walls, um, making visuals on things to increase their vocabulary, helping them with sentence starters so that they can practice writing longer pieces, but they have, you know, just things like that to help modify so that they can access the curriculum. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Any other questions, comments, concerns on the curriculum coordinator update? Moving on to item number 3545, the English language learner, co learner coordinator update. This was included in your packet information. Is there any questions, comments, or concerns? Thank you, Dr. Simpson. Moving on to item number 3546, the grant administrator's update. This was included in your packet for information. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns? She does a great job. And she does. Thank you, Director Dunn. <laughs> Item number 3547, special education update. This was included in your packet for information. Are there any questions, comments, concerns? Thank you, Ms. West. Item number 3548, the special education parents advisory committee update. Mrs. Hurst. Um, I haven't been able to um, get in touch with the, um, the PAC chair, um, but I will definitely have information for you next month. Okay. Thank you very much. Item number 3549, the new school building project, Dr. Pellegrino. Beautiful. They're, they're finally doing some of the landscaping that they um, were supposed to do, um, and it's place is looking great. They've made some, you know, upgrades inside with the, um, the beautiful um, storefront glass that's overlooking the the third floor now, so it's a lot safer um, for kids. We're really pleased with the progress. So overall, just wonderful. On time and on budget, too. Yes. Well, I don't know about on time, but on budget. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, comments, concerns? Moving on to item H, communications, Dr. Pellegrino. So, um, you know, John, you mentioned you didn't get a lot of, of phone calls. I'd like to bring up the fact that I didn't get a lot of phone calls either. This was one of the smoothest <laughs> openings we've had but a lack of phone calls which is a, a great sign happens with a lot of hard work um, from folks um, you know buses again you know there were a few calls about bus stops and things and we responded really quickly to those um, but overall that smooth opening went you know I have to um, you know give credit to you know the whole team at district office all the administrators but also all the teachers who really made this you know opening very smooth I know it was a really hot week um, and you know, I got again. I got very few um, complaints about it, but we we moved classrooms. Teachers were great. Staff were great. Our administrators were great. Everybody was as flexible as possible to make sure everybody was safe. Um, that we continued to have school because we need kids coming through our doors. We know there's been a lot of learning loss over the past few years because of COVID. We don't want to lose any days, and it's important that our kids are in school um, every day. Mm -hmm. um, so. So that's, in terms of the smooth opening, I really appreciate everybody's hard, hard work. Um, sports openings have been phenomenal. I'm really excited that, you know, like I, I've touted, you know, a lot, of, a lot of teams over the past few years, but I have to say that the football team, which has been struggling for, for a while, um, and we've been waiting for um, uh, this group of kids who are really solid athletes and working together as a team for a while, they're all part of Gardner, and 
um, the football team having a 30 to 0 win over Quabbin. Now, just because I come from Quabbin, <laughs> I'd like to be Quabbin a little bit more. So I was really pleased um, with that opener. And the field looks great. The, um, uh, the facility, the, the snack shack slash bathrooms. Kids don't have to go in the building anymore. I mean, things are looking really um, wonderful for, um, in terms of sports. Um, I also want to say there's an increase in enrollment. We're up about 150 students over last year um, on, on October 1st. So that's, and we were off 130 students over that year. So we're up, uh, I think it was um, 25, um, some, uh, 2580 was the, was the last number that I saw for our enrollment. Um, so that's up considerably. And the last thing I just wanna mention is I'd like to thank um, Dr. Simpson. She's done a great job. We've had a number of students move in um, to the area um, who are refugees. Um, but she's done a lot of work with our um, English multilingual learners and um, she actually has an event tomorrow night that's um, uh, not, what's Wednesday, that? Wednesday night. Wednesday night, thank you. Um, and do you, want to, do you want to just mention what that's, what's happening at that event? Um, it's a, we're having a game night. We're just trying to get families to come in, play some games, meet some people. Just get yeah. the field up there. Yeah, at the last event last year, it was really positive and really fun and upbeat. So if you're looking to um, to see a fun, upbeat night, that's uh, a place to be. Do you need any volunteers or? Okay. And that's all I have right now. Thank you very much. Any questions, comments, concerns from any of the committee members? If not, we'll move on to item I, final comments of the school committee, Mrs. ward Layton. Uh, welcome to another school year. Um, I, I do want to say that I've heard really good things that, about how smooth it has gone. Um, lots of knocking on wood, though. Um, as a teacher, myself, um, my daughters say very good things about the food now. They're very happy. Um, the, pizza, the pizza was stellar, apparently. Um, and that the new elementary school traffic pattern even though it feels like a longer line, it's smoother because the buses can get out better and it just, it just seems better. It seems better. Um, and uh, just a couple things that I've seen um, through the last couple days uh, on social media and whatnot is um, just a congrats to Michelle Hefner who now has about 130 <laughs> third and fourth graders that she's teaching band to over at the elementary school. Um, it's just, it's good to see the growth there um, since I think it was three, four years this ago. This is year three. This is year three. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we have a new uh, band teacher at the uh, middle school. And um, of course, I'm biased with music being my thing. Um, but just that it's been a very positive start to the year. And that's good to see. Um, I did want to just recognize the change in language that was made about the English language learner program to multilingual language learner. Um, I think it's just it's just a shift to kind of be more inclusive instead of like a def almost like a deficit. It's not a deficit based uh, term before, but it just I think it's just a good recognition. Um, and other than that, just um, looking forward to another great year. Thank, Thank you. you. Mrs. Hurst. Uh, I just wanted to welcome everybody back for uh, a new school year. Um, listening to the reports and everything tonight, it, it's just always very inspiring to me. Um, I've been an advocate for many, many years, and to see things that I've advocated for start to come to fruition is, is really great. Um, I also did want to mention that September is National Suicide Prevention Month. Um, <clears throat> and uh, there's many resources. All you have to do is Google it on and you'll come up with resources of different things that are happening and walks and, and uh, ways you can be um, helpful as far as like policy and things of that nature. A um, couple of statistics. Um, suicide is the 11th leading cause of death. 48,138 people died by suicide in a year. And it's estimated that 1.7 million have attempted suicide. And that's, um, I mean, the statistics just keep getting higher. Um, and not only, 
you know, um, statistically, middle-aged white men are higher than women. But then we also have our military people who are not being supported. We have young adults who are not being supported in the ways that they should be. There are so many people who feel that it's just a weakness, and it's really not. It takes a lot of strength to stay alive for another day. So. And um, my brother, Eddie, <laughs> is a statistic. A middle-aged white man who died by suicide, and it doesn't have to happen to other families. There's things to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hurst. Attorney Palavin. Um, I just wanted to thank Mrs. Hurst because I know you always bring it up about the mental health issues, and I think it is important that we do talk about those pieces because it does affect everyone. Um, and I also want to welcome everybody back for this year, and hopefully, with all the supports in place, the tier one and tier two, and pieces mm -hmm. like that, that you know we're finally having those conversations regularly and talking about it and helping to support um, the kids in the district, which then supports the families. I know we have the, I think it's called the CARE. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's so, it's okay. CARE, Care Solace, Solus, which also can help um, families you know, engage and interact to find services and other things, because I know that's a difficult process right now. But um, you know, I'm glad you do bring it up, because then we have a chance to talk about it and everyone um, has a, um, you know, sort of realization of what is happening. Um, yeah, and that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Schwartz. Uh, Dr. Pellegrino and I were talking about a, a news report on school status or standing or whatever it was. And evidently the author <coughs> or the reporter didn't do an in-depth uh, study of the quality of the schools, and, and especially Gardner. Uh, he rated, he, she, or whomever, rated Gardner at 242nd, and Oakmont and um, Narragansett were significantly higher. But I think about all the things that have gone on in the past within Gardner of improving education with with MTSS, a professional development of all our teachers and staff, and also getting professional staff to assist our students along their hard road of education. Of the programs that we offer, uh, we had 37 graduates of Mount Wachusett Community College get an associate's degree along with a high school diploma. We're not a dumpy school district, no matter what you do. Our populations have increased in the last two years. So people are looking at us in the positive light, I believe, because they're coming and knocking at our door. What can we do? Can we join? Can we join you guys? We want to. So when you read something in an article, really think about what the, what the guy is really talking about and is it real. In this case, it, it definitely was not real fact. It was bogus in my mind. So I just wanted to say that. I think Gardner School District is a great district. We offer so much. And we keep adding every year. And I don't know how we do it, but we do it. And it's just amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sports. Mr. Lafreni. Just uh, welcome everyone back to uh, the school year. And um, thanks to the staff and the administrators for all the hard work. For it to go this smooth and not get phone calls and emails, it was huge. <laughs> Never had that happen. So they did a great job. It was fantastic and, and much appreciated. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Cormier. Um, great to be back. I'm happy to have another um, school year ahead of us. Everything seems to be going very well. I haven't heard any complaints either. Um, I had the pleasure of going to the football game both Friday and Saturday night this week. Um, with the crowds were huge, even in the rain and the scary weather on Friday. And just as many people came back Saturday, it was wonderful to see. And those kids did a great job on the field. 
Um, looking forward to this coming Sunday going out for the celebration parade um, that the committee has done so much work to put together. Looks like it's going to be a great event. I also wanted to mention that after the parade, the Gardner High School Marching Band will be back at Watkins Field to perform their field show, followed by the UMass Minuteman Marching Band. And it's a great honor to have UMass come out and do that for us, I'm sure. The mayor will be speaking to that as well. Um, but it would be a great event if anybody wants to come out and support the music students of Gardner. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Uh, I just want to again thank the, the administration and all of our teachers and principals for how smooth the school year went. I actually went and walked around all the schools. Uh, I did as many as I could on the first day, but it took two days uh, to, to just stop by and visit everyone and say hi and welcome back. And it's nice to see the energy that's in the buildings too. It's mm -hmm. the I, when I got to the elementary school, it was as parents were dropping students off. And you get the little bit of tears here from the kindergartners on their first day, but everyone else was just excited and happy, and it's just neat to be able to see that. So I'm looking forward to a great school year and welcome everyone back. Uh, I do want to give a special shout out that, uh, and a reminder that the Centennial Celebration Parade is taking place at 1 p.m. this coming Sunday. If you live on a street connected to a street that is part of the parade route, those streets will close at 12.30. If you are on the parade route, that will close at 12. And if you are on Elm Street, that will close at 11.30. So if you're in any of those areas, I'm just glad we don't have school buses going out that day. Um, and then no parking on the streets that have the parade route on them beginning at 7 a.m. because the street sweepers are going by. Uh, the parade will have seven different divisions ending with the UMass Marching Band that has 350 individuals in it this year. Uh, they are the last group, and then they are busing back up to Gardner High School, where, as Mrs. Cormier said, they will have the Gardner High School band perform. There will be a joint performance of Glory to Gardner with 400 people on the, band, on the field with the 350 from UMass and the 50 from Gardner High. And then the UMass band will have their show at the end as well. I think Gardner High's show is the... We have Music of St Stevie Wonder. Music of Stevie Wonder. UMass has... Saturday Night's All Right by Elton John, Uptight by, I'm going to forget his name. It's a great show. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then any uh, band alum who'd like to go down for when UMass plays My Way will be welcome on the field for that one. Um, any middle school or elementary school music student who goes to the show, I will be doing ice cream with the mayor on a random school day that the principals will be picking from that one. So that'll be just a little incentive to get them to the field. Um, but it'll be neat, too, and I want to give a shout-out to our three Gardner High alum, uh, Alexia Minkin, Emily Schaus, and Ellen Brooks, who are performing in the UMass band, coming back to Gardner to perform again. So I just nice. think that's neat. Um, and there will be free food at the UMass show provided by the Montachusetts Suicide Prevention T uh, Task Force as well. So they'll free burgers and dogs at that one. Uh, the Gardner District Court is opening a new Veterans Treatment Court. Uh, on September 20th and Gardner High students have been invited to sing the national anthem at that event too so I just want to give a shout out to our choral students and Joanne Landry for the work that they do there and getting out in the community and getting involved that way uh, and then I just want to end by everything we've heard today and everything that's been going on lately I just I'm really proud of how much we do as a district and as a community for our students and our kids uh, across Gardner, uh, between Dan Fort and everything he does with all of our students, the record number of students we had in our summer program this year, the stuff that we're doing in our after school programs in Gardner High or Gardner Public Schools system alone, let alone all the nonprofit work that we have out there, our athletic programs, our music programs. Um, there's a lot for students and kids to do here in Gardner uh, after school, during school breaks, and things like that throughout the year. And I think it's something that a lot of communities can take our example and go with. So I really want to just thank everyone who's involved in all of that and just say I'm happy to be from Gardner. Uh, but with that, uh, we do have an executive session on the agenda for this evening pursuant to exemption two of the open meeting law, leaving open session to conduct strategies in pre uh, preparation for negotiations uh, with collective bargaining contracts. Uh, so for those of you who are watching, the motion will be made to uh, go into executive session only to come back into open session for the purpose of adjournment. So the recording uh, that you're watching will end once I hit the gavel. Um, and when we come back in, it'll only be a motion to adjourn uh, from there. Anyone who's here in the audience that's not a part of the school committee or part of the district's administration will ask you to leave because the doors will have to be shut for those. Uh, but is there a motion on the floor to go into executive session with exemption two of the open meeting law solely to come back into open session for the purpose of adjournment? So moved. 
Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Lafrenier, seconded by Mr. Schwartz. By the open meeting law, this has to be a roll call vote. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll give Terry a second. You take your time. <laughs> Ready for the roll call. Uh, Mrs. Carm here? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Harris? Present. Mr. Lafrenier? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Calabin? Yes. Mr. Schwartz? Yes. Yes, we'll note that Mrs. Hurst voted yes instead of present on that one. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take a brief recess while the doors are closed and the recording goes off, and we'll go back in in executive session. Thank you.